The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. I got a fever, and the only prescription is Buck. Over the line! This. Of course, Bucky, you were over the line. This is the Is the Cigar Authority. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The Authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. That was pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Barry Stump. Put the scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, you single malt. Glenlivet, Glenfiddich, perhaps. Maybe a Glen Gow. Any Glen. It's time to light them up. Sounds okay. really fun. It's time. Cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowbell. Light them up. Light them up. Light them up, everybody. October 28, 2017. Broadcasting live from the La Four Dominicana Cigar Soundstage. Today, he is a doctor, a scientist, and a cigar smoker, and the ultimate insider, Dr. Mark M- Mick Hosey, Mick right? Hosey, that's Dr. Correct. Mick Hosey will give his perspective that you won't hear anywhere else. Today, we will expose the truth about health and cigars. Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of The Cigar Authority. I feel, I feel special. Yeah, it is I feel special. because he's gracing us with his presence. Absolutely. You're listening to The Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, awarded the top ten educational podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio, at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. They're coming in with wheelchairs, they're coming in with canes, they're just coming in any way they possibly can. I I just want to say, Jonathan, I've always considered you to be short bus special. Short but special? Short bus special. What does that mean? No, the kids that ride the short bus. Oh, short bus. You know know those people that... That don't have good comedic timing. They don't get the joke in when it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to interrupt you while you were doing your read. I appreciate it. I do want to do a shout out. Yeah? Okay. I I forgot Ah! to do the shout out. Shout out. See, now that's comedic (laughs) timing right there. Not really. Uh, We had a visitor that came up just to see the podcast studio. He wasn't able to be here on the Saturday. He came up, I believe it was a Wednesday. And that is Vago from Chicago. Vago and from Chicago. I, I meant to shout out to him last week, and I, com- I, I I set my phone to remind me, and I set it for p.m. not a.m. and or a.m. not p.m. and it came in in the middle of the night. So and, and his name was Vago. He wanted to live in Massachusetts, but he couldn't. He had to go to Chicago so he could be Vago from Chicago. Well, he's going with it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> going with it anyway. So it's Halloween weekend, and this is the, the area to be at Halloween because if Halloween is Salem, Massachusetts, and we get a lot of people that come here, and they come into Salem, New Hampshire, <coughs> asking where is all these uh, special places that happen in Salem, Massachusetts, the Witch Museum yeah, and all that. Yeah, you're not going to find any of that. Up and, there. and we're not far from there, maybe 30 miles away, but Salem, Mass, and Salem, New Hampshire. We do have yeah, a Stonehenge. Stonehenge, right, right, right in my right house. Down, uh, right America down Stonehenge. If you're looking for Stonehenge, you came to the right place. We have that. But Halloween, uh, big deal for you? Is it a big thing? No. It is a big thing, you know. It's like the number two holiday next to um, I'm a, as far as spending money. I'm the reason that I wrote the debonair last week because I used to be the guy who would show up at Halloween parties and be like, I'm not dressing up. Yeah. And it was on debonair. And since I do the segment now, I have to set my game up. So I do have my Where's Waldo costume. It's going on its seventh year. And uh, I'll go as Waldo. Yeah. So when the kids come knocking on your door, do you give them broccoli yeah. um, instead of candy? Well, in our neighborhood, uh, if you're participating, the light is on. And if you're not, the light is off. And I just turn the light off. Uh, you want it, you're that guy. You're the egg house guy. Yeah, if anybody, that explains a lot. Yeah, what's all the eggs doing all over ah. my house? I turn the lights off. If anybody wants to meet me over in Nashua, we'll go TP Jonathan's house. TP, huh? You ever have that done? Toilet paper all over the. Well, I live in a townhouse. Yeah, I'm the middle unit. I mean, they're gonna have to be pretty accurate with the toilet paper. They just talk about you behind your back or right in front of your face. See, I thought you would be the end unit. 
But um, boom, Can we get some sort of rim shot? I don't, I don't know. He's on fire. Can we get a rim shot? So, uh, yeah, Halloween. Uh, also, uh, things happen in the cigar world at Halloween, especially with this guy. I think this is the guy that really started the Halloween cigar stuff because it's been copied and duplicated. And sure. Uh, so this is Tatuaje, and we have, we're going to smoke this year's Tatuaje. Tatuaje Halloween Monster. Tell us about it, Barry. Well, today's first cigar is the Tatuaje Michael, which is part of the Tatuaje Monster series, and it is manufactured in Nicaragua at My Father Cigars. It came in one size, and it measures 6.5 by 52. It features an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper over binder and fillers from Nicaragua. It carries a price tag of $13 per cigar, while a box of 10 retails for $129.99. The cigar is currently sold out, but you can sign up at twoguyscigars.com to be notified if they come back in stock, which they just might. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So this... I think I have a box downstairs if you want it. I will take it. All right. Yeah. So there is two kinds. There's the ones that... that come in a regular box, then they have the dress box. Same exact cigar inside of it. It's the box itself that they paint, basically. Right, and it's shaped like a coffin. Yeah, and this is the ones that are highly collectible. I'd say they're all collectible. We did that one more than others. They, you know, we well, got the phone calls. Do you have the dress box? Mm-hmm. No, you have to be the lucky 13 or the unlucky 13. Right. Retailers. Well, we were the unlucky 13 at one point, and uh, we one. understand why it's unlucky. It's like now it's a sigh of relief that we're yeah, not. Yeah, because you, you, you get, you know, whatever number of, of boxes that you get, and then you get 10 times that of people looking for them. So all you're doing is making enemies, right? Friends. It's pissing people off. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little unlucky when it comes to it, but it rings the register. Retailers want to be that. And uh, if I get offered it again, of course I want to be one of the unlucky 13. Uh, plus, was, in, in the Italian thing, 13 is the lucky number, by the way. Really? For Italians, yeah. You ever see people with a 13 on there, usually Italians? Not friends with a lot of Goombas. No, well, you should be. Anyway, I think you're my only one. Yeah? All right. You get to get out there more often. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars. They stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Perdomo Cigars. So... 56 ring gauge? 56? 52. 52. <laughs> and it's a little bit bigger than past years. Past years have been uh, usually a Churchill. There's been a Torpedo as well. I inhaled. It's not even lit. This was like the original size one like the Frank was? That was the no, I believe one? the Frank was a Churchill. I think it was 7 by 49. Yeah? Okay. All right. Tastes spicy. Tastes like... It's going to be strong. I'm going to I'm going to ring your bell on this one. All right. You you get the uh, Robitussin cherry. Oh my God! Really? Cough syrup. And you yeah. just you just you just lick the cap. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Robitussin cherry. What did the two of you bond while I was gone? <laughs> you thought of that because you coughed because you inhaled little du- dust I particles. Was, it was tasting so good. I'm I'm I'm. In, just trying to like get that the full essence of that cold draw, and I got some dust in my lungs. I'm gonna have to ask Mark Macosi if that's healthy or not. Is that good? Is the tobacco dust in your lungs? Is that okay? He's saying no. He's yeah, either, that's not. That's right. it. He's either shaking his finger or giving me the. Don't finger. inhale. Is the, is the key to this. We're gonna light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone Two. This is the upgraded version. From the original Vertigo Cyclone, what they did was they took the Vertigo big ass tank that, as you know, is patented. Yeah. They made it bigger and better. Then you got the three jets, double wall protection, so the lighter doesn't heat up. You can put it right back in your pocket when you're done. And they made the adjustment wheel at the bottom oh so easy to adjust. This retails for fourteen ninety nine. It's the Vertigo Cyclone Two. It's the best fifteen you're ever going to spend on a light. I'll tell you that. I saw you fixing somebody's lighters today and stuff. All these crappy lighters they bring in and let me help you with this one. Let me fix that one and stuff. Or you should say, just throw them away, take one of these, and be done with it. Yeah, that guy bought two lighters. After the fact? Bought two Cyclones after the fact. The regular Cyclone, not the Cyclone 2. And uh, he's just going to use his lighter that I fixed for him as his backup, which he's never going to need. Right. He'll never get to it. 
So uh, Halloween, a lot of money spent on Halloween, $9.1 billion. I tell you, it's only second to Christmas time. $9.1 in the U.S. spent on it. Pretty equal amounts when it comes to costumes, candy, and decorations. A little more on the costume. $3.4 billion on costumes. Because you got to look good. But you do Waldo for eight years in a row. I do. Yeah. Because I, I'm just – the slutty nurse thing got old. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I think a lot of it is people trying to get away with wearing something they want to wear. Yeah, they want to wear less rather than more. But it's cold around here in New England. Not when it's you're really dancing in a – having a party in a garage somewhere. Really? It gets warm. And um, costumes overriding at $3.4 billion over candy, which is $3.7 billion. They're spending more on the costumes than they are on the candy. And decorations, all two point seven billion, the same exact amount on decorations as in candy. Yeah, my wife contributes to uh, the decoration. She does up the house. We don't do a lot of decorations around here, but we have Halloween decorations because we have Sean here, and he's he's into decorating. He's he decorated himself if you actually look at it, right? It's very fabulous. Yeah, <laughs> very fabulous. So a lot of money spent on Halloween. You know, over nine billion dollars on it. There's stores that open up just for Halloween, Halloween stores. Yeah, sometimes retail space that was otherwise unoccupied, and it gets occupied for a month and a half. Then, you know, they start them up, do it, and then they're out. And now it's all about Christmas. You're going to just skip over Thanksgiving, <coughs> my personal favorite. That's my favorite, my too. eating holiday. But they skip over that. It's from there. It goes from Halloween. Now it goes Christmas immediately. Do you like the eating portion better than you yes. like the cooking portion? Yes. Because I like the cooking the best. Yeah? I like all the prep. I mean, as you know, I cook for days in advance, but I like the cooking part of it. I used to like going over other people's house because there was nothing to do just to eat and not do any prep, but not realizing the vast amount of leftovers. So I like to have it in my house because of the amount of leftovers because it's awesome. The leftover Thanksgiving is better than the actual Thanksgiving. Except for mashed potatoes. They get a little dry. They get cracky. I don't like how the do mashed you, potatoes. How do you reheat them? In the oven. In the oven. and Because you're against the microwave. I'm against the microwave. Yeah. Because the microwave keeps it so it's moist and good. Jonathan, what did you cook last year that you took home with you? <laughs> yes. Was that last year? That was uh, last Christmas. It was not Thanksgiving. It was okay. Christmas. Christmas. Because I was going to ask what your favorite leftover is, and we know it's yeah. not what Jonathan brought. Baked macaroni I made up for that. <laughs> with jalapeno peppers in it. It mm. was fantastic. So it was. It was the best I've ever had. He's tried to duplicate it to make up for what he did. He never duplicated it. That is not that is not true. I duplicated it on the one I sent home for Gianna. The one that I made, I tried doing gluten free pasta. Oh my god. And it was just this gelatinous, cheesy mess. Horrible. Do you have gluten allergies? No, but I Dave, thought do I, you have gluten No. Then why would you do gluten free pasta? I was trying to just to make it worse. Yeah. And, and what is wrong with gluten? Extra gluten. Is there extra gluten? Ed Sullivan, your knee's playing with my cable down He's there. got a Just story. The doctor's got a story oh. on it. He'll save it for him to come up, talk about gluten. I'll tell you, some of the best pizza places in the world have extra gluten in their dough. That's the trick to it. I found out from some people. How come they had pizza with the best? The best that there, there is in Boston is extra gluten in the dough itself. I was happy extra. to see our friend Tommy Greller on the uh, well season. Yeah. I did Sicilian pizza. Yes. That's the best pizza in my opinion. Yeah. Forget about the triangle. Give me the Sicilian. Yeah, because it's thicker and more doughy yes. and it's extra. And then you have um, extra gluten, extra MSG. Is MSG bad? I'm pretty sure it's not health food. No. Mm -hmm. The doctor is not putting his head up and down on that. It's not, <laughs> now he's against that one. Yeah, MSG and me do not agree. Because I've had it with no MSG. <clears throat> Terrible. Terrible. All, the flavor is completely gone. It's Put a little more salt. That's all you need. It's, it's MSG is just salt. But you, do you ever order oh, no MSG? I, I, You're not a Chinese person. I'm not really. <laughs> You're not a Chinese I'm not person. not a foodie, as it were. I like to make my own food. So I looked up Google uh, for the top searched costumes, people trying to buy costumes. And to a surprise, Wonder Woman is number one. Well, the hotness of the movie. Yeah, she's and brand what new. And it, Gal, Gal Gadot or whatever her name is, is pretty hot right now in the news. Oh, I didn't realize it was a movie. That's what yeah. ends up doing it. So yes. that's because it seems so old to me or whatever yeah. it is. But then again, I would say this is, again, the 
the woman dressing up at Halloween trying to take it off, basically. Well, Dave, they can, yeah. is it necessarily all women? Do you have a breakdown? Ah, of the... I don't. <laughs> I right. don't. I would imagine the majority would be, but it could go either way. Who's Holly Quinn? She is a member of the Suicide Squad, which is another comic book movie. Okay. That came out last year. All right, because she's number two. And that's the, this year's slutty nurse. Okay. If you saw a picture of Holly Quinn, you would realize that it's the slutty nurse. Okay. And and this is what it's about, I think. It comes down to the Halloween thing is the sluttiness, right? Just be careful what you say over there. Not yeah. all of us have wives and daughters that listen to the show every week. Okay. And the third is the clown. Just a generic clown. The clown. Wait, one, up. One, once again, it's tied into a movie. Oh, it, really? It, ah. it came out this year. Um, which is Stephen King's... It what? It. That's the name of the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, not, who's okay. on first, what's yeah, on second? Right. <laughs> so It is the story of a, a evil clown that was written by Stephen King that was made into a movie. Sure. Oh, I remember that book. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. like the Halloween version of Aaron Noonan from The Ash Holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get two points on every single All one. All right. So, so it becomes... <laughs> these are movies, and the clown could be a man or a woman. Or it's a man. Could be either or. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this a lot of this is um, women driven. The, well, the first women too, for sure. Yeah, the women go to the party, the men will follow. That's how when I was in the nightclub business, that's how it was, and uh, it seems to be that's how it is. Do ladies right night? Now. Do ladies night? Okay, it is uh, time for the matchup of the week. Matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? And today's hypothetical battle, I see all these people uh, taking the knee when it comes to football during the national anthem, right? Star Spangled Banner. Um, I've been tempted to take a knee to start the show to protest the FDA. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Wasn't sure how it would fly, though. I'm not sure how, how, how you get it back up. up. That, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Leanne Reams rhymes. Leanne, Leanne rhymes. rhymes. Yeah. 1997 All Star Game. And I looked these up. Very good. Oh, yeah. Spectacular. Versus Whitney Houston, 1991 Super Bowl, singing the Star Spangled Banner. And I checked them both, and they both have their reasons why they should be. But uh, I'll give you the last word, Mr. Jonathan. Barry, what do you think? I'm going to go Whitney Houston just because uh, there was a CD made of it. It sold a metric shit ton. Yeah. Um, a, you could say the letter S, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. more fun to say the whole word. Yeah. But I'm going to go Whitney Houston just because it turned into a single um, that generated a lot of sales. Well, here's what I'll say is Leanne Rhymes was an acapella. She did it all by herself. It was unbelievable. There was a lot to it that, that happened. I listened to it a couple of times to see how it was. Whitney Houston, on the other hand, was a lot of music behind yeah, it. Very, orchestra. very exciting full orchestra and stuff. So she had a lot going on there. She had the uh, F-18 fighters fly yeah. over at the end. Yeah, there was a lot added to it. But also, I'll say, is it looked like Whitney Houston had a lot of fun with it. She was smiling and, and laughing through it and animated. So she had... A lot more fun doing it. What do you say? It's tough. It's tough. I can't agree with Barry on this one. I have to go with Leanne Rhymes because if you listen to her early, early, early stuff, what a powerful, powerful voice she had even as a little kid. She didn't lose a single beat all the way through her career and even now still a powerhouse. And uh, 20 years ago. Whitney Houston, her voice started to drop off toward the end. Never. So. I listened to it a couple of times. It was Not fantastic. that thing I'm saying as an oh, artist. Of course. As an artist. She so actually, I have to say She Leanne actually Rhymes. died. So it really dropped. This drop as you're going to get down. I mean, it can't get any lower than that. She yeah. stopped singing altogether. Her voice dropped six feet. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to okay. the dead. But it was so I go Leanne Rhymes on this one. Ed Sullivan, do you have a choice on that? You know, I'm going to go Leanne Rhymes just because I gave Jonathan the crickets. No other reason. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I would you. say it was Whitney Houston, and she, she had lots of help because it was, a, you know, uh, a cappella versus her doing it. But check it out. Go go on YouTube and, and look at that performance of how that was. That was unbelievable. So I, I'd say the best ever uh, was Whitney Houston doing that. But anyway, it's uh, for argument's sake, and that's uh, what the uh, Victor Sinclair uh, VS is all about is for argument's sake. 
So for argument's sake right now, and that's the whole show basically is us arguing with each other what we think is best. Um, do you have, Barry, a best of these these different um, monster series as time went on? My favorite is still the Frank. It was the first one. You always remember your first. Yeah. Thing. And it was, it was. did you have it then? When I had it then when it came out. Really? And then I bought a, a box on the gray market a few years after that. And then I, I stopped. This one, to me, came close. Because it's sensational. Yeah, it came very, very close. But what I liked about the Frank is it had a definitive taste of Mecca wafers that I've never had in another cigar. So that's why any, I like the Frank. Any specific, specific flavor I of a Necco wafer? I can't tell you how many just, times someone has come in and said, do you have any cigars that <laughs> taste like Necco wafers? Do you know that's what, a selling point Do you know right what Necco wafer is? New England Confectionery. Necco, right? And it was a little hard with, oh, with the powdery. Very that familiar. You, that you coughed earlier, the little powder yeah. that was on it. It might be you might have nailed it actually. That was more. It was more the powder than the specific flavor. You know, I've had cigars that reminded me of Topps baseball gum, but that cigar was so easy to identify that it stands out as my favorite. That's another one. And by the way, I believe you've officially horrified the doctor. He is going to come up and give you a full examination and find out exactly what's wrong. And maybe oh, he's a different kind of doctor. <laughs> oh, sorry, different kind of doctor. And he doesn't have any gloves on. He's not qualified for that Who type needs of gloves? Who needs <laughs> gloves? We'll do this raw. <laughs> Barry says, let's do this raw. All right. He was coming on the show, and now he's going down the stairs. <laughs> for some reason. Now it's going down the tube. Why is he running? Yeah. Exercise. Um, so this one is, is the Michael, meaning Michael from... Michael the, Myers from Halloween. Halloween. Perfect, right? Yep. And is this the end? Um, no, I think there's one more coming. Um, it, there's a potential to be one more. Let's put it that way. Because there was something that existed in the Little Monsters and the Skinny Monsters that was never an actual full monster release. Uh, so this is... The Chuck and the Tiff? Right. So there's a chance that those could become a full release. What? That's the one we got, right? We got Chuck. No, we got Jekyll. Oh, oh Jack, Jekyll and Hyde. Right, right. right. Chuck and one. Tiff have never been released. Right. Okay. As monsters. Right. So they've, only been, monsters. they've only been in the little monsters. So right. There's a chance that they could come out. So of this was size. in a little monster. Uh, no, this one was not. Then how could it be? This came out after the little monsters, but I guess he released a few of them before August. Well, they did. So we have no idea. Right? So, right. I mean, I guess you could possibly import them as the monster, and then it's the subline of it is the Frank. But this has been going on for a long time. So if the Frank was the one that was out there a long time ago, why can't the Frank come out as regular production? Tatuaje Frank, regular production, all the time, the one you like the best. I think it could. I think it meets the, uh, the predicate date. They all would meet the predicate date then because it's a monster series. And it's a predicated product at that point. It doesn't matter what factory it's made in. Right. It really doesn't matter what the blend is. It's the name of the product. Yeah, but then size. You could use how many's in a box. You can use the argument that the same number in the box. There's two boxes, same number, ten and thirteen. You can make the argument that you know it's Tatua, hey, Michael. Then you're making the argument that hey, it's the monster series. Hey, Padrones existed for. Since 1964, whatever year. And they yeah. all say So Padron. they can put out any cigar they want as long as it says Padron something. No, they can't. Right. So that's what we're could, assuming. That but we it could do. be that that the, the Frank was one without even a band on it, wasn't it? No, it was a, it was a green and red band, I believe. I thought it was a torn piece of no, tobacco. No, that, that was the face. Ah. See, I confuse them all. Yeah, the torn tobacco was for Leatherface. Okay, and it had no band. That was it, just torn tobacco on right. it. So the first cool. monster came out in 2008. 2008. So it would miss the predicate. Yep, it. it would miss the predicate date. Oh, bummer. Yeah. So 2008 was the Frank, then you had the Drock Face, Wolfman, Mummy, uh, Jason Voorhees, Jekyll, Hyde, Kruger, Michael. And then there's the Chuck and Tiff, which haven't received a full out Halloween. So how many – was his idea to do 13 – um, I don't. I honestly, I don't know the so answer to give that a quick count. Give a quick count to that because I'll tell you how many, at this point how many they're going to end up making. If he's very close to that, he's going to go to thirteen because I just know how he operates. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three more coming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that statement right now. There's three more coming, so don't worry, everybody. 
three more coming. I wasn't worried. So the Tiff, the, the Tiff, uh, next, and the Chuck. Actually, next year he's releasing the Bride, the Bride of Frankenstein. Ah. Then and you then got Chuck and Tiff, and Chuck there's and your Tiff 13. Chuck and Tiff and 13. I got it. I got it. That's the answer. I think. I'm making that up, but I would say <laughs> that's the way it's going to go. All right. What do you like? Do you like it? you like what it tastes like? It's good. It's it's a it's a lot milder than I expected. I was expecting it to be very, very full body. Me too. It's got a lot of mouthfeel. It's got that classic pepin pepper and spice going starting on. To, and it's starting to pick up a little more. A little more, there. but not not aggressive, aggressive. A little uh, sweetness like a molasses. Got, the cherry that I got in the cold draw, completely gone. I got mocha and almost like a tangerine citrus. A little citrus. I got a lot of, a lot of caffeine here. And Ed Sullivan, let me bring you in on this. You smoking it? I'm smoking it periodically. All right. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. I expected stronger out of it. Okay. But Maybe uh, because of the big ring. It's, it's a thicker cigar. It's going to build on us. It's, it's going to go on. I don't know why we expect it to be stronger, but we expect it to be stronger. Was Michael Myers strong? He was a mass murderer, so. Yeah. Makes him tough. Yeah. Makes him a tough guy. Is that what you think? All right. Let's go to break. When we come back, you'll hear some things you probably won't hear from our government or on television. That might be for a reason. Joining us is the former senior investigator of cancer prevention at the National Cancer Institute. Dr. Makosi is live with us at Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. This is David Garofalo, and you've heard me say it over and over again for many years. Please support your local cigar retailer. And I mean it. If you don't buy from them, they will go away, and then what? There'll be no place to go. That being said, sometimes you're far away from any cigar shops or a place that doesn't carry the stuff you've been hearing about and you want to try it. That's where TwoGuysCigars.com comes in. It's the number TwoGuysCigars.com. And unlike most online cigar shops, at twoguyscigars.com, you can buy a single cigar of whatever you want. You don't have to buy boxes or even five packs and suffer through cigars you might not even like. One of this and one of that is acceptable, appreciated, and commonplace at twoguyscigars.com. That's the number, twoguyscigars.com. Thank you for your business. Ooh, we're going to have fun. When the Cigar Authority returns on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage... May we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick, the Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper, fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or a diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. 
but there's something else happening here. The natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed Off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes. Four sizes, including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palma, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor is smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Tony Serino. And this is Carson Serino. From Serino Cigars, you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage. And right now, you'll hear some things you probably won't hear from our government or on television. And you might, it might be for a certain reason. With us is the former senior investigator of cancer prevention at the National Cancer Institute, Dr. Marcosi. Welcome back to the Cigar Authority. Thank you. Good to be with two guys, although it's actually four guys today. Four guys today. And uh, a little birdie told me something. Uh, we're celebrating your birthday today. Yes. So happy birthday Thank to you. you. Is this a special big one? Getting close. Did, yeah? Yep. They're, they're all big anyway. We get your little birthday cake. They, oh, Sean, you don't just make coffee. You make cakes. There we go. <laughs> they tell me I ought to retire. But so happy birthday to this. you. Thank there you. There we go. Thank you. Now, this is not gluten-free cake. Do we have a problem? We don't have a problem with gluten. Okay. And since you brought it up, just okay. something that literally is very timely because we just published the real story on, on, on gluten and wheat. It's the lead story in my uh, October newsletter, which is the Insider's Cures on, on my website. Okay. I've been researching for a while. I don't think anyone else has put the pieces together, okay? Basically, we've seen gluten go from something that – was a problem for maybe one, two percent of the population sure. at most. Now it's most people complain about quote gluten, right? But I think what's really going on is it's a problem with wheat, okay? Because the gluten is very important to bake wheat and the characteristics of baked sure. goods that you prefer. Yeah. The problem is what's happened with wheat in the last fifteen years or so. It's almost all GM, genetically modified. All right. 
to grow GM wheat, you have to use pesticides, one in particular called glyphosate. And they use it, you know, not only to grow it, but when they actually are ready to harvest the seeds, they use it to desiccate. They spray it right on the seed, dries out the seed, makes it lighter, easier to store, mold resistant. So it's good from that standpoint. Right. But it means that all our baked goods are contaminated with glyphosate, which is this pesticide which causes intestinal problems. And so people that are complaining about gluten, it's, the it's actually the pesticide in the wheat. And okay. that's the only way you're going to see something that's supposedly a genetic condition go from 1% of people to, to most people complaining about wheat. I'm going to go out on a limb and yeah. say that the uh, component that you're mentioning here is FDA approved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go out well, on a limb. And EPA approved. And, you know, when you have the, the guy from Monsanto, which makes this stuff, yeah. running the, the FDA. Right. It's not a big surprise. This was Obama, of course, our great yeah. environmental president, our great health president, had a guy from Monsanto running things at the FDA. Yeah, and he, so the guy he replaced think, was under indictment for another problem. So they, they're doing it to save money that they have, pro, they have processed less, but the problem is people are allergic to it, and now we're not buying the product, so it, it's going to fail. Right. It causes the, a gastrointestinal problem. It isn't really an allergy so much as it's a poison. You know, you're poisoning Poison. your digestive system. Let's have some of it. <laughs> so the answer is don't don't use any GM foods. Don't use any foods grown with glyphosate. And the way to get around that yeah. is organic. Okay. Organic foods of all kinds, including organic wheat, flour, wheat, organic, organic, organic wheat. flour with the gluten, and you know, you'll be you'll be good. Okay. And extra gluten is okay. It's okay if you're not that 1% that gotcha. has a true gluten problem. But most people today, the problem is not the gluten in the wheat. It's the pesticide in the wheat. Ah. And we're getting confused. Yeah, because and, why, why 10, 15 years ago, like you say, it didn't happen. So let's figure out what that could be. And so obviously, what have you done differently to that 15 years ago that you did today? So honestly, the way medicine should work, if doctors understand genetics, they understand what you just said. Yeah. A genetic problem doesn't go up you know, 10, 20 <coughs> times. In 15 years. So it's got to be something in the environment. And it's. And what about the percentage of people that just end up following a, a, whatever's going on? That people are saying gluten free and I should get gluten free. And then they say I'll have gluten free too. And they don't even have a problem with it. There, there are some very good gluten free foods um, that, you know, get, as long as they're organic. Yeah. Uh, sometimes with gluten free, they substitute with a lot of sugar. You can check the label because you don't want a lot of sugar. But there's very good gluten-free products. The one I trust is called Aaliyah's. <coughs> it's www.aaliyah's.com, A-L-E-A-I-S. And it's out of uh, Londonderry, or it's uh, Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Okay. And it's run by a guy that I grew up with as a kid here in New England. All right. So uh, you have a web page that you tell all these things as you figure it out as a scientist, as a doctor. And these, this is uh, something people can become an insider and learn these things that goes on. So how, how do people find you? The website is just, it's my name, www.drmacozzi.com. That's Dr. D-R-M-I-C-O-Z-Z-I.com. That's Easy enough. what we use. And all the information is here on everything. The gluten story is the lead story of this month's newsletter. So that's particularly why I wanted to Perfect. mention it. It's brand new information. The, the tobacco story, you know, is, is old and new. Yep, yep, as it goes on. So um, you've been a doctor and a scientist. You work at the National Cancer Institute. Uh, we offered you a cigar earlier today when you came in. You immediately accepted it, lit it up. And you're further along in that cigar than we, are, we are. So yeah, you're, I think you, you would say so. You have no issue. I was sitting indulging. there smoking while you guys were, we're talking. talking right. you know. So th there is no problem for you to say you're not allergic to it. And you don't think that this is harming you in any dramatic way? One or two cigars a day, uh, a pipe a day, even half a pack or less of cigarettes a day has not been associated with, with health problems. And this goes back to some of the first research I did at the NCI, National Cancer Institute, back in the 1980s. And right up to the latest thing that the CDC did just last year, which, of course, is all smoke and mirrors when it comes to them, but the facts are the facts. So we have a problem with the stuff that they're spraying on wheat, and we know that, and they're doing nothing about it, and we do not have a problem with somebody smoking a couple of cigars a day, and yet we are saying we have a big problem with that. Why would that happen? Why 
It's all political correctness. I mean, if you want, I do want to start at the beginning of the story or go to the latest. Yeah, but it's piece just it's just though. politics of, of what it is, but it's not the truth. Pure politics. Now, I, what my question is, it seems like in every study that I've ever read, and, and I'm I'm an avid reader in that respect. I read a lot of stuff. It seems like they are allowing scientists to put an opinion piece at the beginning of the study, and oftentimes, in fact, I have found most times the opinion of the scientist completely contradicts his own findings in the study. That's absolutely correct. It's How can they get away with writing that nonsense at the top? Is it the people well, paying for the study? Well, yes. Well, they have a policy, you know, a government policy, an agency policy to say, this is our policy is, you know, any amount of tobacco is bad. We're going to treat you like a kindergarten kid. Because we're, we're not going to this let is you the know. answer we want. Did they come to you and say, this is the answer we want, and, and now please this is, get us that This answer. is part of the whole government thing, you know, where they control more and more, control behavior, you know, and they've decided, and there's, you know, thousands of people that now make their careers on this, and they're very well compensated for life, you know, and they stick with the party line that, you know, no, no tobacco is good, no, you know, no alcohol is good, when in fact uh, most people who drink or smoke, uh, have no problems and in fact some benefits and but you know a percentage of them have a problem uh, now you say with, with drinking anything. in the case of barry he's uh, kind of a lush <laughs> so is there overindulgence with yeah, the drinking? yes there is okay. uh, you know on the so, alcohol and again the yeah. latest thing that you'll find that, uh the latest <coughs> too much of anything that, is no good 91 percent of people who drink don't have a problem and in fact they are having benefits according to the scientific evidence for their heart health uh their longevity and they're uh, even now brain fu brain function. I'll drink as long that. as it's <laughs> moderate, okay. But nine percent of people who drink have a pro have a serious problem, and it's not just their health problem. They're on the roads causing yeah, a public safety problem. And the issue that bothers me again is is all the emphasis by these local governments to keep bringing down the blood alcohol levels for the ninety one percent who want to have a glass of wine with dinner. And now they're afraid to get behind the wheel because they keep dropping the blood alcohol levels to ridiculous amounts that are not associated with intoxication, according to the you know decades of forensic science. Which yeah. Is, and yet the people I know, the fatalities on the road are caused by people not who had one too many drinks, but who had ten too many drinks. Yeah. So the majority of fatalities are due to these problem drinkers, but somehow they think lowering the blood alcohol level on people who aren't intoxicated to begin with is somehow going to be the answer. And again, it makes no sense. No sense. It's about government control, interference with the lives of honest, you know, sober, tax-paying citizens. And the real problem is, is not being focused on because I guess it's too hard for them to deal with. So we're bringing you on as an expert. And I went through your resume. Very, very impressive. A quick uh, elevator pitch of your resume, of the things you're going to end up saying. Who are you to say such a thing? Uh, what makes you the expert? Well, I, mean, I started working at the National Cancer Institute doing research, an early study on tobacco with some colleagues, some of whom are still there. You know, they don't talk about all of their findings on our tobacco, big tobacco study, the biggest one that had ever been done back in 1988. They'll talk about the problems they found with excessive smoking, but they'll never talk about the lack of any evidence for harm from what I'll call light to moderate smoking, The what we talked about, one or two cigars a day. Which is almost everybody, I would say even less than that, the cigar aficionado put out a poll years ago <coughs> saying that they questioned every of the, one of their subscribers and said that the average is two cigars a week, which would be nothing. There, I, mean, I think you couldn't measure any effect. Right. I mean, the only effect that we did see with the people that had a cigar a day, a pipe a day, or less than half a pack a day was, in fact, they were just as healthy as non-smokers. But, in fact, they, on average, they had healthier weights. Because, you yeah. know, nicotine is a very physiologic substance and, of course, was used as a medicine by Native Americans, which yeah. is how this whole thing got started. And um, it has some physiologic properties that are... Not harmful. Well, it's been uh, proven to benefit the brain as far as fine motor skills, alert, uh, your attention, orientation, short-term memory, long-term memory, working memory. It helps you learn. It's It has some, you know, some of the same kind of properties that caffeine has, which was another thing, oh, you know, for decades. Yeah, that, that, that was bad, too. There's got to be something bad. No, now the facts are that 
not just one or two cups, three or four cups of coffee a day are associated with better brain function, better heart health, uh, and increased longevity. I am going to live forever. That's how I feel. So we have a, a, a cafe here that we smoke cigars at, and we're just trying to make everybody healthier and happier. That's right. Well, there's a physiologic synergy between nicotine and caffeine. Also, you know, everything in moderation. See, this yeah. is the message. And in fact, my November, my November newsletter for Thanksgiving, your favorite holiday. Yes, it is. It's the scientific evidence when you put it all together is telling us, you know, eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. Just do it in moderation, which is what thousands of years of civilization have actually told us. But now we think that, you know, our modern scientists, our politically correct government bureaucrat scientists know better than everybody else. True or false, your idea of moderation is five whole minutes has gone by and we haven't cut the cake. <laughs> it's no. bothering me, but we'll get, we'll get well, to that after. I want to get as much as we can, but I am keep my eyes keep going over to it. So I believe there's an addictive quality when it comes to that cake, for instance. The sugar, There right? is. Sugar, sugar is actually the big problem. That's it. And the facts are finally coming out on that, too. Yeah. And for years, they deflected. When I was at the National Cancer Institute, there were two lines in the, in the research review on sugar. And it was supposedly fine, okay, as long as you didn't have excess calories. And so all the attention went to, you know, saturated fats, cholesterol, even protein which is nonsense. And as a result, the government told people for decades, avoid cholesterol, avoid saturated fats. That meant no eggs, no butter, no meat, and even a lot of seafoods. All of those are actually very healthy foods. When you cut back on cholesterol sources in the diet, fats, saturated fats, you're ending up substituting with more sugar. Your body yeah. starts to crave, your body is craving sustenance and it's going to get a false positive from sugar and it's the empty calories of sugar and i believe frankly again this is evolving constantly with thousands of studies but my explanation for the epidemic of obesity diabetes cardiometabolic heart disease now the latest thing is cancer i'm in the middle of looking at this it's all excess sugar as opposed to all the other things we've been told yeah i believe it that that's what i end up seeing it it did it uh it seems to be the killer of all. Even the people that end up drinking a lot of coffee a day, it is not that they are craving the caffeine. I think it's the people that put sugar in their coffee that it's time for another sugar boost. My advice to people is learn to drink your coffee without sweeteners because whether it's sugar or artificial sweeteners, the crazy thing about artificial sweeteners, they've now been linked to all the same problems, obesity, diabetes, heart disease. Now, not only are they toxic chemicals by and large, but they seem to create this craving in your in your brain. Or yeah. you're, you're, you're fooling your brain. It thinks it's getting something sweet, but then it, it doesn't, it doesn't actually get it. doesn't get, get the it. calories, right? And so now your whole outlook in terms of your diet is altered. So it's, it's debatable as to why artificial sweeteners, which are zero calorie, result in all these health problems. But the fact is they do. Yeah. The FDA now controls cigars. All tobacco products, taking them... Um, and now it seems to be all smoke and mirrors is what, what they're doing of saying that cigars are like the others. The, the latest thing on this is that the CDC has this new center for tobacco research, another huge you know, bureaucratic behemoth with all kinds of people's careers tied up in it, you know, that we got to find a pro new problems now that, you know, create problems. We have That's plenty of problems. We don't have to create new ones. Well, I think we have, there's plenty out there. We don't have to make up problems right. because somebody's career is about making something a problem. Uh, okay, that's what the half so the government is creating problems that don't exist. That don't exist, and then they don't fix them, and so their job never goes away. It's it's a total scandal what goes wow. on with the government. But the thing about this cigar is, if they did the same review. They re reviewed it, you know, two dozen studies, and yes, you know what you hear about is yeah, eight, nine, ten cigars a day. There's a problem with that. But what they don't tell you is they couldn't find any problems with one or two cigars a day. And so their own evidence says one or two cigars a day are not <coughs> harmful. But their logic is to say, well, 12 cigars a day are harmful, so there must be something wrong with one or two cigars a day, even though our own evidence shows that there's nothing wrong. Water That's is good for you, logic. but if you keep drinking water over and over, you're going to eventually drown. So too much water is no good for you. I mean... It, Nobody is having – and if there's guys out there smoking 12 cigars a day, please come to Two Guys Smoke Shop. I'd love you as a customer. <laughs> but 
it doesn't exist. I, I don't recommend no, that. No, but of course. It, but it, it doesn't exist. It, it doesn't, I mean, who could do that? Okay? Yeah. The whole problem with, with any kind of tobacco came basically during and after World War I, where, you know, you could mass produce cigarettes. You know, you, you didn't roll your own anymore. Sure. I mean, how many can you have if you're rolling your own? And people that are busy. You know, you're a cowboy out there. On, you're not <laughs> rolling your own cigarettes all day. Right. I mean, you're having them once in a while. Yeah, at the end of, the, at the end of a long ride, after, you're sitting by the fire. You roll up on a cigarette. You pop it, and you just relax after a long, stressful day. After a meal, whatever. What happened after World War II, uh, World War I and II, the manufacturers, you know, mass-produced cigars. Uh, and not, uh, not cigars so much as cigarettes. Sure. They gave them to the to soldiers, yeah. which, of course, they have a tremendous effect to calm your nerves. Right. And so you had soldiers, you know— hours sitting in trenches punctuated by moments of terror and they'd be smoking and they could because you had these mass produced uh, <coughs> c- cigar- cigarettes. cigarettes so then you had that that generation come out and then world war ii the same story you had the second generation come out and it's all about excess consumption if you were still rolling your own cigarettes with natural whole leaf tobacco and having one after a meal you you, you couldn't find a problem with that and yet, it'll. It, but now, it, the story is, everybody knows that cigarettes are bad for you. Everybody knows that smoking is bad for you. This is what I hear on the news that everybody knows it is. You know, there's no question about it. Is the news? There is no question about that. They don't even want to have the argument of it. They've proven it to themselves, and they're saying it to everybody. The so-called settled science. Okay? Yeah. So there's supposed to be settled science about tobacco, about the climate, which we're still trying to figure out the evidence if you want to be truly scientific the real settled science comes to sugar right that is proven and there's no warning label on the bag of five pound bag of sugar that's there it's a Uh, tremendous disservice to the american people and we pay for all this and how about that we have to put warning labels on it that says it is proven that cigarettes the new warning label of fda is going to say uh cigarettes are harmful it's not true but yet there's going to be a warning that that says it that it is true in excess in excess. But it doesn't say that. And if you could put the word excess, but then have you eliminate that. Could we be... fight to have them put a label on boxes of cigars that say uh, that you'll ease the symptoms of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, <laughs> right. Tourette's. Uh, you're less likely to get Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and other inflammatory bowel diseases, as well as less likely to get lung cancer and coronary heart disease. Could we, could we put that label on top of their BS label? Is that possible? Well, now you're moving from the FDA to the FTC, and this also in terms of how you're advertising. You know, there's rules about all this stuff. We can't even tell the truth about the benefits of, of uh, vitamin D, you know, to, to prevent he- uh, problems, which would be another thing. Talk about some of these neurological diseases. Vitamin D would be tremendously beneficial. Most Americans are deficient in vitamin D because they've been told by a generation of dermatologists to never go out in the sun. Or, or wear SPF 55 if, if you're going to be out in the sun for more than 10 minutes. That's a whole other discussion. So, you know, look, you, you, they've got all the laws about labeling, about advertising. You know, it's illegal to tell the truth is what it boils down to. So you have to educate people in other ways. This is what we do through the website, and we have very grateful readers. So if smoking a couple of cigars or half a pack of cigarettes a day or a pipe is not bad for you, what about secondhand smoke? Does it all, all of a sudden get worse that it went out in the atmosphere? Well, someone might have bad breath. Well, you know, exhaling. all these people who live in these big cities, you know, who are so politically sure. correct about everything. California, you know, the biggest polluted city you know, in the country, state in the country. They're the ones that Thomas Jefferson warned about way back when. But that's another story. But these people walk around these cities who think they're so politically correct and enlightened and educated. They're breathing secondhand smoke far worse just from the pollution in the air. Right. Trucks going by and, and uh, automobiles and everything else. That's, and that's then and the indoor air pollution, forget that. I mean, for, and forget indoor tobacco smoke. And look at all the chemicals being outgassed from all these scented candles. Modern, you know, modern uh, regula- regulated building materials. Some, ah. some of these huge fires, okay, tobacco is a fire hazard. Okay, that's an issue. But these fires that, that happened uh, in London and elsewhere... Uh, it was because of the combustibility of the environmentally regulated, approved building materials. Didn't even think of that. Yeah. No, it's, it's just so how many much, examples. How much longer do you think I would live if I did an experiment, say, for the rest of my life? 
and did the exact opposite of what the government tells me to do. Well, you know, it's always hard to predict the future, but I can tell you if you'd done the exact opposite of what the government told you to do for the last 30 years in terms of dietary recommendations, you know, better off. I'd look like this because I have. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I listened to my grandmother instead of the government because I worked for the government and I knew it's all bullshit. It is unbelievable that that the the truth is so different than what is is brought out to the media. The, is the media just ignorant themselves on this, or do they have an agenda? Well, I mean, I think that that people that become journalists, I'm astounded at their ignorance. Um, there used to be something called the science journalist, and I used to interact with them quite a bit, in the, and they were pretty knowledgeable about science. A lot of them were. I remember. Uh, Jules Berman, for example, with ABC. Now it's just, you know, health news just becomes more fodder for, again, what I call fake news. I mean, if you look at the advertising, you're watching the evening news, and the advertisements are about drugs. Drugs. So, you know, once in a while, you'll have some kind of expose on the drug disaster, and now you're getting some attention, particularly here in New Hampshire, thanks to the governor and others. But the advertiser the isn't opium. happy about it, right? But the advertisers are still the same. Yeah. Know? So great, you don't have you don't have tobacco advertising anymore. We have drug advertising. Right, it's crazy. How about marijuana now? Legal legalized marijuana. What do we think of that? Well, again, I try to stick with the evidence. I let me just start with this because personal behavior is one thing, harming yourself is one thing. Mm -hmm. But when you cross the line, which is what they've done with cigarettes, with this secondhand smoke, yeah, chimera, which is another bunch of smoke and mirrors, is now you're potentially harming somebody else. Well, I talked about fatal motor vehicle accidents. And it's mostly, you know, people that have had way too much to drink, sure. having not way over the, the limits. You yeah. Know? And uh, what we've seen in states that have legalized marijuana is you now see that more there's more and more fatalities and more and more involve marijuana. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's motor an, vehicle fatalities, motor vehicle fatalities. And it's an intoxicant that's a hazard to you as a member of the public. So it isn't just about. Your own behavior. And there is no way to test somebody who is under the influence of marijuana right now where there's no like good, you can with a breathalyzer. That's, there's nothing like that that's been correlated to forensic standards of behavior and intoxication. So law enforcement's just, you know, scrambling to try to figure out what to do. It's a disaster. When you say it's not and when you say it's not harmful to the individual, that's another myth. And this is the other thing that's inconsistent. If they want to say that breathing smoke into your lungs is not good in excess. Well, yeah, I agree. It's not good. You don't want to inhale a cigar. You don't want to smoke more, more than half a pack a day. I mean, if yeah. you smoke cigarettes, cut down to less than half a pack a day. That's some realistic advice yeah. that your doctor ought to be offering to people instead of this draconian all or none yeah. kind of nonsense, the first thing which they, has they, nothing to do with the science. Yeah, the first thing they say is they go right to that. Do you smoke? But it's the first question. Ma marijuana, you know, it's been shown to have emo short-term emotional uh, problems especially in adolescents, long-term mental health problems, uh, lung problems. In France, you don't hear about it in this country, but in France they're seeing you know, increased emergency room visits with people with heart attacks and heart problems from <coughs> marijuana. But in, you know, I go on the Internet and, well, you know, they laugh because, oh, it's harmless and we should have it because it's so good for everything. And you know what? It, it, it can be good for certain things like pain and there's other things that, may, that have some health benefits. Uh, for example, you know, certainly an alternative yeah, to as a prescribed product for somebody. And prescribed, but then the yeah. problem with prescription is they talk about medical marijuana. There are no medical prescription guidelines. Right. So it's uh, how's that medical? Yeah. You know, so that doesn't even exist. But they say yes, it's good for stress and PTSD and pain, and that's true. But then again, a critical review of the actual scientific evidence that was done by the VA. Because veterans could certainly use some help. Sure. They found there isn't really good evidence for pain or PTSD in veterans. So, again, if, if there's myth. There's a hundred times more myth than there is evidence. All the stuff that they're pushing marijuana through under are all things that smoking a cigar a couple of times a day would help with. Yes, and it's a question of degree. you know. And, yeah, you'd have to do a comparative study, but that's correct. But here's the kicker that, again, I haven't seen anywhere else except on my own website. DrMcCosey.com. Nice plug. Where there's, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, this good. is no, important like information, no, and I don't see it anywhere right. else. That's it, yeah. Okay, you go on the Internet about marijuana, it's 99% BS. 
But I'm telling you that there's at least half a dozen other herbs that are not intoxicating from the plant kingdom, just like marijuana. And they have, and like they have things, these herbs have principles in marijuana that they, that they associate with some of the benefits from, you know, pain to other health benefits. So why is the government pushing the marijuana through and pulling back on tobacco? Why are they making that choice? It's totally inconsistent. You know, the same governments that are striking, you know, tightening, you know, on alcohol for moderate yeah. drinkers, tobacco, they're the same politically correct idiots who are running around saying, let's legalize marijuana. It's the stupidest thing you could imagine. Now, I remember all of a sudden a couple of glasses of wine were good for you. All of a sudden that comes out. It comes out also a couple of cigars are good for you too, but that gets pushed aside and for some reason the wine gets through and the belief is having a couple of glasses of wine are good, which made a dramatic increase to wine consumption. But it isn't just wine. It really is. It's alcohol in general. That's exactly that's that's another point. point. Yeah, our kind of thinking is... Barry, turn your headset off for a second. There's, there's <laughs> some kind of... There's supposed to be some kind of magic ingredient in red wine, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> the magic bullet, the resveratrol, all this other nonsense. Right. You know, you'd have to you know have 100 glasses of wine a day to get an effective dose of resveratrol if that's what it was about. No, it's beer... It's, you know, one or, two, one or two cocktails that are, you know, not, again, in excess. The alcohol itself has tremendous, in moderation, yeah. is what's having the benefits for relaxation, stress reduction. Stress stress is the, the factor behind every disease. The, the thing and I always we, say to people, they, they come in and I, you know, we do little classes and teach people about cigars. And as I get into it, with 20 minutes in or so, when you start seeing people smoking a cigar along with me, and the shoulders drop, and they're in the chair a different way, and I go, it already happened to you guys already, because I've been watching it for 32 years in the cigar business. A guy comes in, stressful day, has a cigar, 20 minutes into it, the guy's a new man. It actually has already happened. There are some customers we will not talk to, not word one, until, until the 20 just, minutes has gone yes. by. He comes up, I know to, I know his Stogie Points yeah, number by heart, yeah. plug him in, let him go sit down for 20 minutes, and then I know I can go up and say, Officer, how was your day today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's so much to it, and you have all this information in length, scientifically broken down of exactly what you figured, and they go on to the website again? www.drmacosi.com. And they can find information of anything. You can search any kind of thing that you're into, interested in, because you, you, you're not just talking about tobacco, but you talk about all kinds of different it, things. Everything right? related to lifestyle, diet, you know, uh, because this is 98%, you know, of our, of our time. You're, you're, in, you're, in, you're interacting with the healthcare system, hopefully, you know, less than 1% of your time. What's going to affect you is what you do the other 99% of your time. And the good news is it isn't so outlandish that, you know, again, our grandparents had a lot of it figured out. Moderation. And again, to put it in terms of Thanksgiving coming yeah. up, eat, drink, and be merry in moderation. There we go. There we go. Happy birthday, Dr. Marcosi. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thanks for coming on. And uh, check his website out. Go on there. Learn a little something. This is something that, um, listen, CNN's not going to call him up and invite him on. They talk. used to. Yeah, they used to <laughs> until he started telling the truth of the stuff right. they didn't want to know. So that, that's what happens. You're going to hear the truth here. When we come back. I'll talk with J.R. Dominguez. Uh, it's about his new brands that are coming out in his collaboration. Uh, that is ahead. We take a peek into the asylum and find out what's up in the cigar world. That and more. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. This is Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars as Raphael Nodel has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Raphael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. 
aging room Solera. It will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soil of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at TwoGuysCigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points of Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tobacco Lera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Loto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full body, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. 
this crafty shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. Got too far. Yeah. There's too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. We got to keep our composure. With your host. Come on, Diablo. David Garofalo. Count of three. Name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One, two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Very stunning. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere. I'm a former greenskeeper now. I'm about to become the Masters Champion. It's time to light them up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good, Good housekeeping. For the Cigar Authority. Can we just become best friends? Yep. And we are back with our number two, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage, located at Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. That was interesting to me. I don't know about hell, you. One hell of a guest. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row, the Cigar Authority is now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. Dr. Marcosi. Micosi. Micosi. What a Marcosi I go to every time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. We'll have him on again and get more information as the real information goes on. It's coffee time. We grabbed a quick slice of cake in between. You grabbed a quick slice of cake. Yeah, you didn't have it. There was some lemon in it. Oh, it was so good. Wasn't that really good? It was real good. Come on up, John. Come on. We have uh, we have a drip. We uh, this is the that's not a way to refer to Jonathan. Huh? It's a drip. That's not a way to refer to Jonathan. You can just leave one over here and then dump one on Barry's lap. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, sir. This week we should work on Sean's microphone. Oh yes. We we'll go wireless. What? We could, we could, uh, we could, we could put him up on the lavalier. Well, I have a microphone coming. I haven't told you quite, oh, quite God. yet about. Should I get into that now? It's on the way. It is a microphone <coughs> ball. It's it's a foam ball that you throw into the audience, and they talk into the ball. What do you want? Oh, thank you. Uh, they, you throw the ball into the audience, and the audience talks into the ball, and it's a wireless microphone, and it gets thrown around into the audience so people can ask questions. I saw it on the Shock Tank, and I thought it was great, so I ordered one, and it should be in for next week. Just when everything gets lined up and it's all running smoothly. Yeah, you throw something in. You keep it interesting. That is not necessarily going to keep it interesting. Well... Jonathan, I don't actually know what I'm doing yet, so it's the perfect time to layer on some more stuff. All right. All right. All right. If you're okay with it, Ed Sullivan, I'm, I'm okay good. with it. All right. So we're going from a, I would say, medium plus. I expected that to be a more full body. I'm going to save the rest of it because I didn't get to a lot of it because I got so interested in, in the uh, talking that was going on and the questions I was asking that uh, I didn't get to the whole cigar, <coughs> although uh, the uh, the doctor got all the way done on his. Yes, he did. Boy, he was a fast smoker. Well, he, he had a full half an hour puffing away every 30 seconds waiting to come on the uh, air as he waited in our green room. Right, the green room. The, that couch right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a green room. <laughs> all right, so let's light up the next cigar because we know that smoking uh, a couple of cigars is just fine every day. I appreciate so, you bettering my health. Every Saturday. That's what we're trying to do, but Barry, the sugar thing. Did you pay attention yes, to I the did. sugar thing? I did. Because you do an in inordinate amount of sugar, in especially in your coffee. Yep. Especially in the coffee. So if we can get that down to zero. And uh, Mark <coughs> had an interesting, Mark McCosey had an interesting point that you should try to. You almost done over there? Almost. 
If he coughs as soon as I start talking, I'm throwing something at him. I, part uh, of it's a nervous cough. It, it must be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, today's second cigar is Jose Dominguez, which is manufactured in the Dominican Republic. And today we are smoking the Gordito, which measures 5 by 50 and it features an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper over Dominican binder and fillers. It's part of the Cigar Authority care package, and it carries a price tag of $5.29 per cigar, while a box of 20 retails for $99.99, which is a saving of roughly 7% off the signal price. But it gets even better, because if you buy one box, you're going to get a second box free. That's two boxes at $99.99 for a savings of over $100 or over 50%. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. An unbelievable cigar for that kind of price. And this went out in the care package. So yes, it did. A million yeah. people smoking along with us. <laughs> I don't know, a little, little shy of a million, we'll call it a thousand, <laughs> but um, we are going to open that up very soon. Very soon. Maybe a week or two away. Just pay attention. There's a guy, Paul, that that chimes in on the YouTube videos that is unhappy with the amount of teasing that you do. Yeah? He says you tease things too much. I'm not I'm not teasing. I'm letting you know in advance because maybe you say, oh, the holidays are coming. I'm not going to listen because I'm busy during those holiday times. Or so whatever. you tease it? No, I'm letting you know in advance. You better listen because then the next thing you know, the holidays are over, and then we shut it off, which is probably what happened to him last time because if you paid attention when we did it last time, it maybe was some sort of special episode or something that happened. Maybe it was on, maybe, let's call it our 300th episode or something that we opened it up or it was, you know, something that was special. So we gave another gift to our listeners for listening. We give so gifts. Maybe, yeah, this is we what can't we, do. we give us. We give. So maybe something like that is coming up. It's a hint. It's you're an very, insider's hint. Like you're very mo- subtle. Like the Makosi newsletter it's a hint it's an insider's look of what's really going on so and I, i'm a subscriber to his newsletter and it is never short of absolutely breathtaking the amount of information the amount of studying that he does he's very studious and i get interested when it's a subject that i don't even care about and then i start reading about it anyway and all of a sudden i'm interested in in what it is you know gluten i don't have a problem with gluten and you read about what it is and oh maybe it's this and stuff and you know i'm a semi featured writer in his blog. No, no, I do not know that. I'm not often featured. It was just the one time. Oh, just one uh, time. I I must have missed that. I wrote about the the health benefits of the Nikolai Volkov soup, which Ah, I'm a huge proponent of. Yes, you are. We had it the other day. Yes, we did, because you said you were coming down with something. I appreciate it very much. Wiped it out right away. Plus, it was delicious. It's delicious. Delicious and nutritious. You can uh, check out the recipe on CigarAuthority.com. Just search for Nikolai Volkov. There's only two things, the time he was on and... The recipe for the soup. And it's right. probably the only recipe we have on there. So maybe you can search the <laughs> recipe. Because we're not doing recipes. What we are is cutting our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Perdomo Cigars. And uh, we have to plan our... Um, trip to Nicaragua, maybe. We're, t- we're talking about that now. Maybe uh, going to visit again. I'm in. Very clean tasting. You got Very. Clean. Not a lot. Not a lot of taste. A little. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, not a lot of taste. Um, let, me go, <laughs> let me go with a little doughy, a little flour dough. With the gluten. With the gluten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Extra gluten. Absolutely. Dough. Maybe pizza, like a little pizza dough. <clears throat> Have you ever had sourdough? Like a sourdough yeah. roll? Is yeah. a little sourdoughy? Not a big fan, by the way. Really? Yeah, of the, of the sourdough. I love it. What makes it sour? Has it gone bad? No, it's a it's an active culture. Create this rotting, festering thing. Yeah, I don't want that. Thing and a, it tastes like it has be, begun a bad process. Kind of has. Yeah. So That's why, why, why do you like it? I, I just like it. Okay? Yeah? You like what it tastes like? We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Cyclone 2. This is a triple jet lighter featuring double wall protection so you can leave it lit as long as you need to. Easy adjustment wheel at the bottom. And yes, it does feature the patented, and it's even larger, the patented Vertigo Big Ass Tank 
This retails for fourteen ninety nine. It's the Vertigo Cyclone Two. I now, highly recommend this lighter. I fixed a lot of lighters this week, and uh, they've all had the same exact problem. Uh, Ed, if you can get me on the close up, they there, weren't Vertigos. Some of them were Vertigos. Really? And here's the here's where the problem is. When you light your cigar, if you come in from the bottom, every single time, you end up with some ash particulates that fall inside the lighter. You want to come in from the side. Ah, it'll never happen. And then your ash particulates fall, and they don't end up in your lighter. Every single lighter that I fixed this week, except for one. Just blow that stuff out. I had to clean them out, brush them out with a All toothbrush. Right. And That's what I do every week, and you blame me for the ash particles on the floor. <laughs> the amount of ash particles that you generate. There's some dandruff down there. There's ash. There's the end of your cigar. Do you, do you light your cigar while you're driving? Yes. Me too. A lot of times, you know, I started driving or whatever, and I'm thinking to myself, there's traffic, what's going on? Oh, I need a cigar. And I go and I grab a cigar because mm-hmm. you ever need a cigar, just go in my glove compartment thing or whatever. Been there many times. Nice yeah. So there's always a stash in there. So I grab a cigar. Now I'm driving. I don't even know what I, what I got. I take it out of the cellophane. I'm cutting. I'm listening to radio at the same time, maybe a few texts here and there as I'm going along. And then I have to light the cigar. And I am so scared I'm going to burn my nose. Something's going to burn or whatever. So I'm lighting the cigar as I'm driving, and all kinds of stuff is happening. So I find myself the exact wrong thing to do is tapping the lighter uh, to where I am here. So right underneath. Causing it to exactly happen. Because you just saw as I tapped that, the yeah, ash fell down. But I do it so I don't drive off the road. What I should do is pull over and light my cigar and light it properly and take. Nah, you give up. You'd give up your spot in traffic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to really get in front of the guy it's in a front rat of me. Race. It's the whole game. I got to get in front of him. Doesn't matter where I am or what I'm going. My whole job is to get in front of the guy that's in front of me. So Rob Steele in the chat room is saying he just flew out of Logan Airport and TSA confiscated his cyclone. Wow. And you need to stop telling people how to do it because they're on to you. They're on to you now. One guy gets caught out of thousands. That's not on. That's luck. Because I do it Even all the sun the time. shines on a dog's I, I, ass I carry days. on, man. I carry it on. I carry five or six of them. I got so mad when I got you in the airport, and there was this little smoking lounge at the airport, and my lighter and cigars and everything were in the, in the checked-on bag, and my stuff, I didn't have any, and I go, this is never going to happen never. again. Even if they took it, you know, I bought two Whatever, for 20 bucks. Yeah. It's $10, let it happen, but it hasn't. There I am. With it, and so Rob, sorry you got pinched, buddy. But uh, the the other trick, this is the solid trick because the TSA guys aren't really so much concerned you're flying with a lighter; they're concerned they want your lighter. Yeah. Turn the lighter all the way down so it's off, and then it's broken, and you can show them it doesn't even work. It's not. Take it if you want. It's not even. It's broken. I'm gonna bring it back. They're gonna give me a new one when I get to where I'm going. Yeah. It's broken. Good one. Good one. Unless the TSA is listening to our show. Yeah, now they're going to turn it up to check. They don't know how to stick their thumbnail in the bottom of a regular cyclone and turn it to the left. Uh, yeah. Maybe they do now. On a regular one, but this one has the big-ass wheel. Oh, this is the big-ass wheel on the big-ass this, this is the one. This is the, the go-to. It's amazing. There's, there's more expensive ones, but this is the go-to right here. Cyclone 2. If you didn't think they could make it better, they did. It's the, one of the few sequels that outdoes the original. So imagining the, the cigar we're smoking now, the value of what this is, you end up buying two boxes of big, it came to $100 for 40 cigars. You're looking at $2 and change. Two fifty? Yeah, less, two and a quarter. Unbelievable. And, and we've got a whole bunch of people smoking a cigar. Yes. Oh, my God. Mon- yeah. Monday's going to be. Yeah, Monday's going to be busy. Yeah, yes. You- if people don't take advantage of that. Crazy. What I dig about this is. That it is... Does not come with donuts, though. <laughs> no donuts. <laughs> no, it doesn't. doesn't. Speaking of donuts, David uh, found out some uh, very disheartening news. Disturbing. Disturbing news. Although not the best donut in the world, but anyway, it is what it is. Dunkin' Donuts is going down to something like 19 core donuts. 
They're getting They're rid of lots a, of it. One of them is the coconut. We're worried about the coconut. We're not sure. We're waiting to pay attention to that because if it is, I have to stop. So wait, they, they, they bought like Baskin Robbins. They put Baskin Robbins in all their stores. Baskin Robbins is known for 31 flavors. Yes. They should have 31 donuts. I don't disagree with you there. But Minimum. Yes. There, there, was a, there was a caller who asked to remain nameless who is willing to invest in a business <laughs> idea with David. They're going to go to every Dunkin' Donuts that they can find in, in the tri-state area here and buy up every have single every uh, single <laughs> coconut donut and put them on ice, he said, and then sell them on eBay for big money. Big so it's tri-state Massachusetts, New Hampshire, I don't Maine, know. There is no tri-state. Massachusetts, yeah, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. That was a direct quote. Tri-state area. Yeah. <laughs> Vermont, New Hampshire, Mass. Something about using Uber to go pick them up and deliver them. Margins were coming in. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the bottle return to a state that's ten percent. Done. done the math. I've run the cents. numbers. Yeah. Can't work. Get the extra day, the mail truck. So, um, yeah, maybe um, Tuesdays I've been doing this little walkthrough and selling cigars on Facebook Live just to see. But this would have been a real go-to deal. It's a good one. But this deal, this deal is going to end. Look at the combustion line. Yeah. Perfect burn. So. If you're smoking, you say it's a little light for me. Cause it's kind of light cigar, but I like it. I got a little vanilla going on here. Vanilla, vanilla cake, mm -hmm. right? And that's not what we just ate. Th this cake we had was a lemon cake, but this would be vanilla cake with frosting. Cleanse your palate with the coffee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This is one of my favorite cigars to have a cup of coffee on a spring or summer morning. Yeah. But it's when it gets too cold, I can't sit outside with my morning yeah. coffee. So You don't smoke in the house? No. no. You have an awful lot of one-off things. Hopefully my mom, mother-in-law is not listening, but when she kicks the bucket, I'll smoke a mouse. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> terrible. You're an evil person. I'm not debonair. Not at all. Not, a, <clears throat> not at all. Uh, last week, did you see the ash holes? I did. I did. Yeah. See they, it every week. They had the whole team back. Yeah, so they did. Back to the original ash hole thing. So. Well, they had a guest, this guy Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> who's, a, who's a regular on the show who's never there. But uh, we're going to have Oliver on in December, I believe. We're nice. Bring him on and talk about his stuff. But um, a couple of weeks ago, they had um, J.R. Dominguez on. So I thought, seeing he was here, and he stuck around after because we had to do regular cigar business as opposed to podcast stuff, I said, let's go in the little room. we got a little broadcast room over here uh, because he had something going on. So I did a little interview uh, of J.R. Dominguez and, and his, Robert Wright. Robert Wright, his partner. Let's hear that. All right, there's a new company out there, and um, Robert Wright is uh, – what, what do you – exactly, Robert, with the company? Uh, well, basically, there's a distribution agreement that I have with uh, Jose Dominguez, Jr. Uh, we have uh, uh, several new brands that's going to be distributed to the Pure Soul Cigar Company. Uh, is it the Pure Soul Cigar Company? Is, is the company itself? Yes, sir. Okay, so – Robert Wright, who is the owner of Pure Soul Cigars, on Door and Cigar, and now you started a distribution, your own distribution company. Correct. And you are distributing Jose Dominguez cigars. Manufactured in the Dominican Republic by Jose Dominguez uh, and uh, Junior, who is uh, an awesome partner to have. Uh, he's an exceptional uh, person to have in, in reference to uh, operation and uh, production uh, Responsibility. So that's because he's right here looking at you. But what do you what do you really <laughs> what do you really think? <laughs> do you think do you think that's a reason? <laughs> could be a why. <laughs> so so this, is, this is a true partnership. This is it a is. collaboration yeah. between right. the two. That is correct. And Jose, you've always had your cigars and had them um, sold directly from your company to the different bigger yes. uh, su supply chains. Yes. And now it's brick and mortar, hitting the ground, yes. running. Brick and mortar with Robert Wright, who's Robert. How many years? A lot of years in this guy. Uh, close to thirty years. Thirty years. Yes. So uh, this is no newcomer. You got lots of friends out there. You're gonna bring them not only your cigar, which they probably already have anyway, but bring Jose's Jose Dominguez along with other brands too. Exactly. Uh, because of the uh, manufacturing capabilities, I'm able to offer and present a variety of different quality cigars at different price points, which is something that uh, I think. Uh, is very important for me. Uh, I like to be in a position to offer as many consumers quality, not necessarily at an expensive price point. I see the prices that are on there. You're talking uh, real low price cigars, things that maybe a brick and mortar store could compete with some of these online seriously discounted products. Uh, exactly. And these are not liquidated products. These are brands that uh, are going to be part of the uh, company. 
there, uh, as I said, I believe that there's quality at an affordable price. Okay, so for instance, Jose, give me some of the brands that you guys are putting out together. Well, some of the brands that we uh, we put in together, uh, putting aside the Pure Soul, which is uh, Robert's uh, brand that was already existing in the market, and Jose Dominguez Cigars, which was uh, my brand already existing. So your Jose Dominguez is is your Dominican Jose Dominguez that's yes. out there. Robert's is his existing Honduran. Honduran brand. That's you don't make there. it? I don't make you it. You don't make no. it? Okay. So we'll keep it like that for now. Um, but uh, we, you know, as we came together, we came up also with some brands that we're going to do in collaboration together uh, as a true partnership. And some of those brands are the house blends, quality selection, special selection, and some others uh, we are having in the in the pipes. And, and these are bundles? Uh, most a- of them are bundle lines. Okay. We're, what we're trying to create is we're trying to recreate a portfolio that can that can meet every customer's need without having to go elsewhere. Yeah, so, so if somebody's looking for a three dollar cigar, you have it. Exactly. They so three dollar cigar, five dollar cigar, dollar. cigar, we have it. Six dollar cigar, we have yeah. it. Eight dollar cigar, we have it. Wow. So that's awesome. Is there something that stands out, Robert, to you of these besides your own pure soul of uh, one of them that you had that we should be on the lookout for that hits your taste profile? Well, yeah, I. I've had opportunities to uh, collaborate with other uh, manufacturers. I chose uh, Jose Dominguez because of the quality uh, and the uh, uh, value. Yeah, the ability say, to, right? uh, to produce volume. Um, it's, it's, I think, second to none. Um, and the choices of the leaf that we use are not low priming. They're you know, uh, mid to, to high priming wrappers. Which delivers full flavor, right? Um, and he's one of the only manufacturers that I know of personally that can uh, offer a quality uh, product at that price point. That's what I see. That when it comes to um, a cigar with a little more oomph to it, that's when the price gets, actually gets driven up dramatically. So a lot of the things you see out there online, low, low price cigars, it's low priming. The, the you know you know better than I do, Jose. The sand leaves or, or the stuff at the bottom of the plant, you start getting up the plant, drives the price up. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, that is correct. So when you have, for instance, you have the tobacco from the same plant, from the same, basically the same farm and everything. Yeah. And the different primings, you know, what they do, especially in wrapper, what they do is they classify the primings by how the leaf is, how healthy the leaf is. If it's broken on one side, is it broken on both sides? Is it usable or not? Depending on these questions, the leaf gets classified. So the same tobacco that gets classified in different primings, and then obviously the more expensive that you buy, the more the more cost is going to add to the end product. So when you instead of going for the higher primings, you go a little bit below and you go down to the mid primings, which still will deliver the same flavor. You just have to put a little bit more labor into selecting the wrapper a little bit better to have an end product. At a lower cost, it's going to give you the same quality. And if I was to give that a name, I would say what you do there. And I've been to your factory and I watch how that operates. And, how, you know, why is it that you guys can do that and every other manufacturer cannot pull that off? The word is magic. And why does that word actually ring so true to your company? Because that's the name of the company. <laughs> yeah. Cuban Magic. Magia Cubana. Which is which means Cuban magic, Cuban right? Cuban magic, and right. this is the magic of what's happening in, in Jose Dominguez. How can they do it? It's magic. Yeah. The reason that I thought of the van name is because um, throughout the years uh, we've been called uh, magic workers, you know, with the, the magicians, because we make things that not a lot of people can do, right. whereas delivering quality product for a value price and um, a lot of people ask us how we do it. We explain the process, but at the end, they they summarize it and say, "Well, you're magicians." And you know, throughout the years, I kept hearing that until I decided to create the factory and name it just like that: the Cuban magicians or uh, the Cuban magic. Right. So, Robert, we have uh, lots of retailers that actually listen into the show. How could somebody get a hold of you? You're a new company that's out there. How do they find you? You're based out of Miami, is that right? Yes, we have a, a warehouse in a shipping location in Miami. Uh, we have a website, Pure Soul Cigars. It uh, has the 800 number. Uh, you can uh, leave a message. Uh, 
on that number. And uh, what is that number? Uh, that's a oh, question. that's a secret. Can't that's, tell you. <laughs> that's a secret. It's not a secret. I'm so uh, yeah. uh, bad with numbers. Um, uh, ah, you don't know what it is. They're I gonna have to look it up. So, so go to Pure Soul. PureSoulCigars.com, and it has the information there. And give uh, Robert a call, and he's gonna get exactly. the store set up. And you consumers that are listening in, look for what brands they should look for. Pure Soul, of course. Pure Soul Cigars. Jose and Dominguez. Brands, Jose Dominguez. We have some cigarillos. We have some uh, awesome bundles. And I just want to add that every product that we that I distribute, along with uh, Jr., uh, it's it's a full flavor, uh, well balanced complex brand at uh, various price points. I do not compromise flavor profile, uh, balance, and complexity because of price. Uh, I was just kidding. You know, I know the 800 number. I'm yeah, just, exactly. I'm just messing around. It's 800-235-1429. 800-235-1429. That's the 800 number. Uh, reach out, and I'll reach back at you. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Back to the show. Okay, so what I was trying to do there is get them to say what they didn't want to say. They got some great stuff coming out. And this, this, they got it in before the predicate dates and all that stuff. They've been making cigars for so many years. They have so many different brands. And they showed me some of the stuff earlier. And then later I said, come on, let's go do this thing. And I was trying to get them to say it. Then after the thing was over and they said, we didn't want to say it. And I go, it's pretty obvious you didn't want to say right. it. Says, well, why did you ask three times? I was just trying to get them to say it. So it's a good effort. They, they, it's a good I, effort. I tried anyway. So uh, one of the one of the cigars that um, J.R. Dominguez is Jose Rafael Dominguez. He's got a brand called Don Rafael, right? So this is one of our things. So right now it's time for the Don Rafael Offer of the Day, brought to you by Don Rafael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? So here's the Don Rafael Offer of the Day. Today... It's a hundred dollars to do. You're back on this hundred dollar kick. You're trying to get people to do some messed up stuff for low money. There it is. So that's where I'm at. Because if I say ten thousand dollars, you say yes, you'll do it, and, I, and we, we can't really know if you're going to do it because I'm not paying the ten thousand dollars. <coughs> but I will do, give you a hundred dollars to do a double Rocky Balboa, and this is not do uh, push-ups with one hand. This I is. I can do that. This is the six eggs. A double, so 12 eggs in a glass and drink them down. Dozen eggs, right down raw. For $100. Barry Stein? No. I would have done the six. Yeah, I would have done the six. 12. Good thing I went uh, to the Hang double. on a second. Hang on a second. Do I get to pick the eggs? No. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Some organic type of egg? Is there an organic egg? Of course there's organic eggs. Let me pick the eggs. There's an organic egg? Yeah. I gotta What's be organic about it? I just it? gotta be careful. I'm not gonna get salmonella from eating the raw eggs. So I gotta. I have to be able to pick the eggs. Pick the eggs. I would have gone with quail eggs, and I could have done it in one swallow. Really? So it would take longer. It would take longer and to Barry, crack the eggs. Barry would have took that little chocolate egg. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it shouldn't matter to you because you're an expert at swallowing. There we go. <laughs> It's a myth. That was that was crossing the line it, even for me. Is it bad to eat a raw egg? Is it bad for there's, it? There's there's dangers to it. That's why I don't eat mayonnaise. Raw egg. It's raw egg and uh, vinegar. All right. So what are our thoughts here? Early thoughts here on Jose Dominguez. Early thoughts. A little bit of cedar. Um, some well, hay notes. It's smooth. cedar wrapped. Right. It's isn't, smooth. isn't it very well wrapped? Isn't it beautiful it's looking for gorgeous. a two dollar cigar? It's pretty amazing. It's on the perfect it's, burn. I know it has nothing to do with the cigar, but I like the wine stock paper that the band is on. It kind of gives it a little bit more of an elegant feel. It's got a piece of cedar around it. It's got ribbon around that. It's beautifully packaged in the box. It's pretty unbelievable. Very impressive. Nice gift for somebody. Also a nice cigar to have. Say it's not your exact hook profile. It's too mild for you or something. But to have in the humidor for your friend that comes in and says, I want to smoke a cigar with you. Perfect go-to shot here. Yeah, because it's going to be mild enough. They're going to be able to smoke the whole thing and not get themselves sick. I, wa I think the price is too low. I don't disagree with that. He's not here. It was, that was on recording, so he's not here to say it. But he priced it too low because I think people stay away from it because you wouldn't. And I, that's why I wanted to actually have it in the care mm -hmm. package. We put expensive cigars in there too. But maybe something you wouldn't even try because the price is too low. Yeah, it's I was guilty of that for a while. It's exceptional, when and, I and they have here, a. I didn't go near it because of the price. They have a Maduro version, 
Yeah. You've blinded me on the Maduro version, and I was guessing $18 because I thought that I recognized the flavor profile. I thought you had pulled a Davidoff Maduro. Really? And pulled the wrapper off, and it turns out it's Jose Dominguez Maduro. Pretty unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the classic three-way. Mr. John will get Debonair, and Barry's got news. Cigar news and letters in the mailbox and a lot more. We're live from Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. I got a piece of cake. Stepping into the age of a new podcast code. When it comes to enjoying a premium handmade cigar, using the finest materials of velvet and silk, their smoking jackets are made for a lasting impression. Smokey Joe's has fitted the likes of Smokey Robinson, James Brown, Sammy Davis Jr., and now they want to fit you too with a smoking jacket. Proudly designed and manufactured in the USA, Smokey Joe's invites you to feel the inspiration of fashion from an era where clothing was designed using only the finest materials and craftsmanship. Smokey Joe's clothing continues to be a story of America at its best. Innovation, hard work, and fearless enterprise. When you light up the best, smoke it while wearing the best. Smoking Joe's Smoking Jackets. Available at SmokeyJoe'sClothing.com That's SmokeyJoe'sClothing.com Be sure to tell them the Cigar Authority sent you. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars and the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavana number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Search and general warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameroon binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. 
that Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Raised in Cuba and steeped in the rich tradition of the Fernandez cigar legacy, A.J. Fernandez produces unparalleled premium cigars in Esteli, Nicaragua, ensuring superior quality. The day-to-day -day operations at Tabacalera A.J. Fernandez Cigars de Nicaragua are managed under the watchful eye of A.J. Fernandez himself. Through a fusion of inherited techniques and learned patience, A.J. Fernandez filler tobaccos are grown from prized seeds which are proprietary only to the Fernandez family. Perhaps the most essential quality of the A.J. Fernandez line of cigars, such as New World, Enclave and Last Call, is the perspective and motivation of A.J. Fernandez, as well as the history of the Fernandez family. Enjoy the continuing legacy of A.J. Fernandez Cigars. Bubbles, bubbles. I'm J.R. Dominguez. Thank you for listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Retailers Radio Network. And we are back, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana. Cigar sound set. Gentleman Jonathan's here. He's going to do a debonair. we got a classic three-way. And right now, what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein? It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse Cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse Cigar today. Well, it's been an extremely quiet week, and Davidoff has opened a new headquarter in Basel that measures 82,000 square feet. It's seven stories tall. Wow. It includes a smoking lounge. I would hope. <laughs> yeah. Our neighbors a little bit to the south in Connecticut were anxiously awaiting the state budget to see if the tobacco tax would change on cigars, but it remains untouched at a 50-cent cap. And lastly, our friend Steve Saka announced the Moisture de Saka Nakatamali will land at retailers such as TwoGuysCigars.com. How the hell can you not say cinnamon, but you just ripped <laughs> that off like a band-aid? And that cigar will be available in mid-November, and that's what's up in the cigar world. What's up in the cigar world was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian Broadleaf filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Recluse Cigars is What's Up? Tamale? What? Naka tamale. Naka tamale? There's, there's, uh, there's two people that I believe Barry Stein has an unhealthy obsession with. Steve Saka's one, yeah, and sure. Skip Martin is the other. And he's coming in next week, so it's going to be... I mean, that's yeah, all he posts about on I social know, media. I, know. We, I get we got to promote that he's coming in, but... He started four weeks ago. So we Jose Dominguez out. is coming in. He gets one little mention on Barry's news feed, and that's <laughs> yeah. it. Skip Martin's coming in. The whole world stops. The amount of product that Dave ordered for this event. We got to move There's it. There's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. If this stuff doesn't sell, you, you were wrong again. Yeah. It, this is not good. Me? You would make it be useful. No, I know. <laughs> Me? All right. Uh, let's take a peek into the asylum. Jonathan's got something crazy here. Or Barry does. They're coming to take me away. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Oh, oh this is Jerry. New way, ho, ho, hee, hee, ha, ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to take me away. <laughs> It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. How much do you love your boss? Well, a New York woman evidently thought highly of hers as she offered to donate a kidney to wow. her ailing boss. I can't even get a lunch from you, Barry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However, after tests determined the employee was not a good match, she decided to go ahead with the flow and donate her kidney anyway to a stranger in Missouri. Wow. Upon completion of the surgery at a hospital, the car dealership where the woman worked wanted her back a week later despite complications that prolonged her recovery. After a month of recovery from digestive issues and leg numbness, the employee returned, and a short time later, the very boss that the employee tried to donate a kidney to fired her, citing performance reasons. What? Now the employee is pissed off and suing her former employee for discrimination, and that's not only Discrimination? Insane, it's well, asylum. It is crazy. All they're the way coming around. to take yeah. me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away. I'm proud of him, though. <laughs> what? That was pretty sedate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saving really saving raunchy for, one for next week. For your buddy Skip Martin, mm -hmm. who you want to uh, impress next week, so you'll save that. Next week, Ro and Ma. Remember uh, Rowan and Martin? Yeah. That's what I always think. Every time you say Ro and Ma, I think of Yo-Yo Ma, the, oh, yeah. the cellist. Cellist, yeah. We should separate the two of them on the interview and have one up and then the other one up and really divide and conquer. Because they're going to have a united front if they come up. We're going to get nothing out of them. I don't know about that. But Ro Ma, it's going to be Mike Rosali and Skip Martin. And uh, their brands are on fire. Roma Craft, uh, they got a lot of stuff out there. And they're going to talk to us about uh, the European market, which they're paying a lot of attention to. <coughs> the following week, we're looking at the Cigar Aficionado 25 years later. And uh, followed by the Contenders of the Cigar of the Year on November 18th with a special mystery guest right now. A couple of them. Couple. I don't... I don't like I don't like where these mystery guests end up going. No, we'll see what happens there. Followed by November twenty fifth, our four hundredth episode. Four hundred of these shows, two hours each. Eight hundred hours of three hundred and ninety nine too many. Ah, it's crazy. While you enjoy life to its fullest, it's important to be debonair. How to be more debonair and gentleman like is gentleman Jonathan. Do you need a gentleman? Gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Need a gentleman? <laughs> you wouldn't want to call me a gentleman. Ladies, fasten your seatbelts, switch on your electronic devices, and pop up the volume. You need a gentleman? And the gentleman's way is brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. Debonair Cigars provide their clients with suspension of reality. Time spent smoking a debonair can never be subtracted from one's life. Today we're pressed for time, so I'm going to keep it brief. A woman is only pregnant if she says she is first. That is all. Amen. The question is, are you debonair or not? Have you ever made the mistake? Once. <laughs> I made the mistake. Yeah, you I did. I made the mistake. Everybody, nobody ever did it twice. I made the mistake and I pulled my buddy. I was uh, in high school. I pulled my buddy aside and said, how far along is your mom? And he said, she couldn't hear anything. And he goes, oh, my God, Ma! Oh, no. <laughs> and threw me under the bus. Yeah. Okay. I had to leave. That's a I good one. Yeah. That is a good one for someone who's never made the mistake. She'll decide if she's pregnant or not. Don't bring it up. Don't ever make that mistake. She could be nine and a half months pregnant. Don't say a word. Absolutely. Okay, so we get time to squeeze it in? Oh, yeah. Classic three-way? Okay, let's get to the classic three-way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. Epic Rap Battles of the Rap! Now it's time for the Epic Battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. I don't tell anyone about this. I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In classic history. It is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under 
three dollars per cigar. You like that, baby? Give me more where that came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Barry's looking at me like, I got this, which means he did a little studying. Ed no, Sullivan. No studying. Our, Ed Sullivan, our champion? Yes, sir. He's our champion. He says, good, good enough. Uh, so sure. I had a feeling somebody was going to get ready. So instead of the birthday today, I'm going to go to the birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is October 9th. Ed Sullivan, and the birth date of Richard Dreyfus, American actor. He was in Jaws, Nuts, Mrs. Holland's Opus, American Graffiti, born in Brooklyn, New York. We're throwing one over to uh, Barry on that. That's where he's from. Born today, Richard Dreyfus. What year? Without Not, going over. Uh, 1939. 39, Barry. 19. Oh, what would be Jonathan? Oh, Jonathan. 45. 45. 36. 36. Mr. Jonathan will take the point. He said 45. It is 47. 45. It is 47. Mr. Jonathan's ahead. And it goes over to Mr. Jonathan. Kate Jackson. Remember Kate Jackson? You Charlie's enough? Angels. Charlie's Angels. Rookies, Charlie's Angels, Scarecrow, and Mrs. King. Uh, she was the hot one back in my day. Born in Birmingham, Alabama. Kate Jackson. Born tomorrow. What year? 1958. 58. 52. 52. He didn't write it down. He's cheating. Right into the calculator. 50. 50. Everybody is over. 48. Everybody is over. Wow. Uh, over to you, Barry. Yes. Yeah. Over to you. Paul Orndorff. The wrestler. Him? The yeah. wrestler. Paul Orndorff. WCW. SMW. NWA. WWF. Mr. Wonderful. Ah. Paul Orndorff. Born today. Ah. What year? 1945. 45, he says, Ed Sullivan. 1952. 52. I got 56. 56. Barry will take the point at 45. I need a new bell. Can I get one for Christmas? My bell isn't doing what the bell used to do. <laughs> well, you know, you're at that age where you can't ring your bell anymore. Can't ring <laughs> so that goes to Barry, who gets a point. Barry has a point. Mr. Jonathan has a point. Ed Sullivan, who I threw a, a curveball on, he didn't know... Uh, it was happening. Has no points yet. Two points for an exact number, and it goes over to Barry. Barry. Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson, rocker from the Jackson Five. Did he ever sing a song? Name a Randy Jackson song. I couldn't find one. I don't think he does. <laughs> but he's Randy Jackson from the Jackson Five. 1954. 54, he says. Ed Sullivan. 1947. 47. I thought I was playing it safe, too, with uh, 1948. 48. It's 61, you guys. My God. It's not that old. 61. But uh, Barry's going to get it at 54. And I only have one left. It's Sullivan. you gotta, you got to do this. you got to game up, son. You, gotta, you need two points. Exact number to hit it. Which would retain your title ship. And it's over to you? Yeah, it's Ed Sullivan. Wyona Ryder. Wyona Ryder, American actor. Wynona Ryder. Wynona Ryder. Uh, Heather's um, Edward Scissorhand, Beetlejuice, Mr. Deeds. See Mr. Deeds? No, was I haven't seen Mr. Deeds. Never saw that? Uh, A remake of Mr. Deeds that they did probably 10 years ago. Great movie. I highly recommend it. Mr. Deeds. Very Dave, good. Dave told you. I just like Very feet. funny. I like feet, I like okay? Feet. I like as soon feet. as I get home, I think I'm you gonna, underestimate uh, my sneakiness. That's the, that's the homework. <laughs> Mr. Well, no, as soon as I go home, I'm going to binge watch uh, uh, Stranger Things Part 2. Stranger Things? That's a Netflix miniseries uh, thing that she's on. Yeah, but Mr. Deeds. Okay. Better. Better. Ed Sullivan, what year was she born? 1966. 66, he says. He's going for two points. He says 66. Uh, I'm going to go 72. 72. I think Dave just told us it was 66, but I got 1963 written down. 63. 72 is over. 63 will take it. 71. Uh, 71. My, my bell is gone. Well, did it, I'm going to the cowbell. <laughs> Don't ring the cowbell in your thing. What well, year did, complaints. What year did Ed say? 66. And I had 63, so that would have given the point to Ed. 
Really? It said 66? Yep. Yeah. And it's 71? Okay. Yeah. It's not a wipeout, but Barry still wins it. Barry's our champion, two to one to one. Right. Barry can afford to be generous when he wins. Ah, <laughs> that's why he was doing it. That's why he was doing it. But I appreciate it nonetheless. It's not quite giving a kidney, but. No, my goodness. So we did wrap it up in time. We, we went a little long with uh, the doctor because it was so worth good it. and it was worth, worth it. it. Uh, but um, next week, uh, Cro-Magnon, Intemperance, Neanderthal. They're funny names for cigars, but they are hot boutique cigars. There's no doubt about it. Mike Rosali and Skip Martin are the Ro and the Ma and Roma Craft. They'll join us live here to talk about the reasons they're concentrating on European cigars. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And uh, unlike most shows, you probably learned something during the last two hours, but you still got to remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.